Hey everybody, welcome to Klaus to the Heart here on YouTube.com. I'm Jason Klaus. I certainly appreciate you taking time uh, out of your week to give the show a watch. I'm very excited about this, this week's episode because I'm going to start kind of a new series here on the, on the YouTube show. It's going to be something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to start doing more of these spotlight pieces on people that I think the absolute world of and we're calling this the unsung hero series and when I started to think about this whole new concept we're going to be doing these about once a month um, I couldn't think of a better guy to to debut this particular genre of the show than my guest with me this week is Will Will Morona? Will, brother, it's uh, I've been wanting to, to be able to sit down with you for for quite some time to bring you on the show. Um, I think you have a pretty awesome story, and I mean above all else, you're just an awesome dude from from the word go. Uh, I met Will um, a couple of years ago. It was actually in the midst of the. The strike that we were on he both he and i work for one of the big three we are at, at the truck plant in flint michigan and uh, will that i brother i can vividly remember the first day i met you i was i was taking some some t-shirts up uh that i had printed you know during during the strike and i met you at our union hall and you didn't know me and I didn't know you, but the way you engaged me, it was like, you know, we had been, you know, lifelong friends. And I came away from that, and, and, and my wife was, was with me, and I'm like, I just met one of the coolest guys I have ever met while working for this company. Um, but before we get there, n number one, I really appreciate you t taking time out to, to be on, on the show. You and I, we just fi finished working, right? Like I seen you about about an hour ago. And uh, <laughs> we, we, we should be laying in bed right now, but we're sitting here doing this. But uh, for, So first of all, I really appreciate all, all of your time this morning. Hey, I thank you for having me on the show, man. I've been a fan since uh, I got to see it for the first time. And... Incredible man! So the support is right back at you. you can tell I got the uh, latest latest swag from uh, House of the Heart, so I got to represent the plant. But uh, yeah, my my experience from you with you from the beginning was the same. You know, definitely seemed very genuine, and I know there was a lot of guys. Uh, obviously, we were hurting on the strike, and you know, right. people doing their side gigs and making a buck, and there was nothing wrong with that. But you got angle. Well, I, I certainly appreciate that. Uh, but before we we start talking about your career with with GM and 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 everything, kind of take me through your childhood. Where where did you grow up at? What kind of of interest were were you involved in? So uh, I was born in '76, bicentennial baby. Um, yes, right. sir. <laughs> Right now, man, we're, we're some old dinosaurs giving it away, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, but yeah, I was born in Royal Oak. Um, uh, my parents, they both worked in the city of Detroit. My daddy was a boilermaker, so he was union affiliated. And my mom, um, she was uh, a nurse in the city of Detroit. It used to be a Michigan osteopedic, one of the biggest hospitals, ended up closing down, but, uh, you know, it was the big one at the time. And we're, they were in Detroit during the 68 riot. And, you know, when I was born, they decided, you know, okay, we're going to move to the suburbs, get a better life going, find a place good for our son. I'm, I'm an only child. Um, but the one thing that's definitely stayed with me, my dad, he was upset with the, with the Detroit Tigers. Worked for a short time as an usher, you know, he wasn't working as an usher games. I was forced to be at the games and, you know, at 
at Tiger events and signings, you know, and it, it it just kind of crept in the blood, and uh, you know, I, I started to learn, kind of embrace the experience. You know, I'm just a massive Tiger fan to the core. You know, that led into the the GM thing. You know, I worked for about 15 years at Bull and Die in the mechanic in Dearborn, uh, but in 2015 I started going through a divorce. Uh, a lot of things happened with Obamacare that really made me kind of take a look at my life and say, okay, I can make a new beginning here or we can have it crumble down. And I decided to take the higher road. Um, had an opportunity with with him, you know, in, in Detroit. And I was called at the time and I jumped at it. You know, it was a, a risk that you don't get, you don't get the opportunity every day like that, especially like in the middle of your life. Right. So, you know, I decided to do it and basically went from um, a little over a hundred man staff, my job in Dearborn, and, you know, they were my total family, um, to over 2,000 people. Right. Was, uh, it was a good slap in the face and it was an awakening, you know, uh, in a really good way. You know, I was very scared, you know, again, almost 40 years old and. Oh my God! These young, these young bucks and these young women are going to eat me alive. And uh, you know, it turned out to be a very positive experience, not only with with people, but you know, just opening me up and getting to know people more and kind of creeping in their heads. You know, like what 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 makes them tick and what makes them passionate about being a UAW member and took off from there. Uh, Real quick, backing up a little bit, you said you were born in, in Royal Oak. Yes. Would, would that have been at, at Beaumont? That is at Beaumont. William that, Beaumont. My, I was born there. My brother was born there. So that, that's crazy. That's that crazy. Is, <laughs> that. Huh. See, I, I knew we had more, more in common than just who signed our paychecks. <laughs> um, that's well, so you know the one thing about you, Will, that 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 really struck me is your involvement with the union. Now you had just mentioned a little bit ago, um, your father was part of of a union. I mean, is that kind of where where it stemmed from? Did you always have aspirations to follow in his footsteps as being a union member of of some sort? He actually pushed. A pushed me away from it you know he, he encouraged me to get educated go to college you know um but you know he comes from a different era too you know he, i'm not saying he didn't have good experiences but i know at that time uh you know again he came in detroit in the early to the mid 50s looking for work you know with the big three and um, found it as a boilermaker and then you know worked with ford for uh, you know quite an amount of time uh but that was an era you know when there was a lot of is going on by corporate. You know, the UAW wasn't represented. There was, it was a lot back and forth. Where now it's, you know, we meet every couple of years, they do a contract, they're able to secure things for us. So he, he pushed me the other way, but, you know, and again, he gave me the kind of warning that if I one day did work for the big three, you know, that there was a lot of things that were to benefit off, you know, you could still create a, a good life for your, yourself and your family. At that point. Um, so that, that kind of helped me with my decision to take that risk, take that jump into the, you know, UAW, especially. My thing with the UAW, from day one, I met some key people at DM, you know, one of my mentors, her name is Rhonda Maurer. Um, she was you know, one of the first female presidents at Right Ham Tramick. She just really kind of opened my eyes to really make a difference through the UAW. Um, so between her and you know, the chairman, Mike Plater, a lot of people there, I got a lot of opportunity very quickly involved. More than, hey, I want to help out. You know, one Saturday, 
and it just went from there. Joining a committee, you know, as a committee man, got elected as a committee man for, for General Assembly, and uh, was welcomed with open arms to the Civil Rights Committee, where that was just a great experience. I got to go to Black Lake and take training there and started to investigate that ceramic. Overall, it was very surreal, very overwhelming, but in a good way. Sure. Um, but really, through those kind of committees and the, the jobs I was doing, you know, as as well being on the line and being connected with people, that really like turned my my missing my family from my other job. Okay, this is a brand new whole. Big and then you know I came to Flint. You know I thought right was going to be closed and. Didn't end up being closed, but the time we were told it was going to be closed, so we took relocation to go to uh, Flint. And you know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, it was just, it was scary again. You know, again we had some security there for a while, and then it turned to be scary. And um, it was just a great experience. You know, I mean, like I said, we met. And I got there shortly before we actually went on strike, and. Uh, I mean, that strike just changed my whole life, you know. I mean, that was something that I heard from my dad and grandpa and people that we grew up with during those times when, you know, working for the big three was a good thing. But representing them was just a gift. So right. I knew in my head, like, okay, this is my chance to contribute to Local 598, but to really show you the membership that had been there and has been at Flint, you know, like, I'm serious about Aaron, for you guys, you know, I'm serious about trying to do more than just shake a hand and point a finger and do all that. You know, I wanted to do something positive. I mean, big, you know, big shout out to Dave Garcia. He's our veterans committee chair, and, and, and Roz, Rosalind Morris, Johnny Jackson, people like that welcome me with open arms. Said, you know, have at it. We want more people like you, and we want more people to feel involved and committed. They feel like a five, you know, a true five nine member. I remember what one of the first things I heard was you know, when I'd bring up camp or I'd bring up local twenty member, I got corrected. I was like, like, no, you're you're a five nine person. You know, you're a five nine member. So that that was that was awesome. I feel that right. Up there. That's, you know, my my dealings with our local is nowhere near on on the level that that you have. Um, I was part of the of the education committee for for a brief time. Um, but you know, like my dealings with them have been from more of an entertainment standpoint. You know, I was approached to, to bring my wrestling show to Soberfest. You know, th things of that nature. So that's where, you know, I don't have that that kind of of experience like you do. Um, my my dealings that I have had with them have been overwhelmingly positive. And you know, the like you said, there there is that sense of overall unity. You know, that's yeah. the now the one thing about you. Well, and and anybody they they just sat, sat here and and listened to to what you just had to say is my biggest takeaway from that is that you genuinely are in this to help everybody. It's not just how you benefit; it's how the whole membership can be improved. And and I mean, because there's, you know, you know, as well as I do, brother, in, in our line of work, there's always room for improvement in some way or another. Every day, every minute, man. For, I mean, for sure. And there are those people, and I think you will agree with me, there there are those people on the line now that will sit there and piss and moan and, and complain about everything that's not happening, but they do nothing about it. Whereas you... You're in there, man. You know you you you've made yourself known. You you are obviously very well, very well spoken, very well re respected, and 
that was my that was another thing that I took away from our, our meeting was this guy, you know, is a genuine nice guy. There is no ulterior motives whatsoever. Now I can't necessarily say that for every single person that I have come in contact with 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 our our membership. Thankfully they're in the minority side of of that group because there are tremendous men and women in, in our local that go above and beyond to help out with 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 the community and I mean during the strike oh. in my opinion you saw you, you saw people for who they really are the good and the bad yeah with you there has been no change whatsoever you you right. have been you have been upstanding you have been professional you have been courteous you you are and i've said this a thousand times in conversations that i've had with you know our co-workers and colleagues will will, will is one of those guys that if he says he's got your back he's got your back that you are the one guy that i don't ever have to worry about and and to me that speaks volumes on a number of things. Number one, your character. Number two, how you were raised. And number three, your who you are fundamentally as a person. You've listened to a few of my shows. You've watched my shows. You know I'm very much about that. What what makes a person tick? What is on, on the inside? Don't sell me a bunch of bs that yeah. i'm going to find out you know later on that that is not who you truly are so to me well that's why you are an unsung hero now when i texted you about this a, a few days ago your reply was and i'm paraphrasing here okay. um oh, i'm no. not i'm not a hero i'm not an, an no. unsung hero and I wanted to start there. I wanted to start on, on an argument with you over text. Like, this is why I think you are. But I'm like, no, I'm going to wait for the show because that makes for compelling TV, right? <laughs> like you said, I almost wanted to give that right back to you because, and it's not about us being heroes. It's just about taking that first step, not being scared, not being worried about what people think about you. Because we both know, you know, we're, Sometimes I feel like we're back at high school. You know, there's exactly. And it's it's daily, it's it's weekly, it's weekly, it's yearly. But the one thing I can say, and I can say it 100 percent about Flint Assembly and our 598 family is that I tried in a lot of ways to to get involved with local 22 and reach out to the community. Um and it was nowhere near what's going on. And you could see, you could see our plant and those other plants around us impact the community, you know, and, and how much they gave back to us during the strike. You know, and I don't think that would ever happen to Detroit. I don't know. I I don't want to guess. I can almost I'd put money down. And that's the one thing I seen in you when I met you was that you weren't out to the buck. You were out to support yourself and get through this. And but you were there for people. You know? I, I seen you like daily and all the time, and you weren't just hurts out. You were talking to people. You were out there, and your family was out there, and you guys were there for the Red Shirt Day, you know, the events that you know that you want to see people there. You want to see that support, and you want to see that UAW is a joke, it's something that right. it, is family to people, and it's something that obviously creates a life for me and you. That, that's that's very special. But the biggest thing is community. Five nine eight. I just started realizing, you know, from my time here, that they do all they do so many things. Not just through their committees, but just reaching out, like old newsboys and that polar plunge. You know, we had this massive plan. I was going to see if you were oh. going to bring this up. <laughs> we had really show out this year, and, and COVID. You know, I'll say it. Damn it, COVID. I know it. Um, Screwed everything up. Just got to make it bigger for next year. Then no worries. Right. 
Um, but yeah, there, I got to do that for the first time, and it was just the real experience one I won't ever forget. And that was just one of those things where I thought 590 was behind me. I was able to get back. I was able to raise money. You know, old newsboys. I mean, it just stuff like that to be a part of that. How can you not? Right. You know? so, or for me, it, it's not about being a hero. It's about seeing the good in people, and, and seeing people that that want to give. They're not. They're not doing it for get recognition. They're not doing it so they can put on a platform. They're just doing it because it, feel, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel good to do it with your brothers and sisters. And uh, there's just all these facets to you that I'm finding out more and more, you know. Again, like, right. involved with the Sober Fest, and that was clear because it was huge. It was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then to find out, you know, you written some articles for Vets Committee, and, you know, you were, you were getting your hands on different things, and that's just that's exciting. Yeah, you know, we were actually, you know, you know talking about COVID and how, I mean, for us personally, but I mean, really, the whole world was shut down there for, for I mean, it was something, it's been something straight out of a bad horror flick that just will not end, right? Right. You know, it, it seems like a lifetime ago that we, we could work on, on the line and not have to wear masks and things of this nature. Like, th this is the most I've seen your face, your whole face, not from the nose up, and I don't know how long. I almost forgot what you look like. <laughs> you <know>? Hi, man. <laughs> uh, what Will was was referring to in terms of the um, the polar plunge is we had actually come up. He was working. He was covering the job across the line from me one day, and we got this talking. And w Will is a wrestling fan from from back in the day. You know, back in the golden era and the attitude era, um, you know, obviously I'm very much involved in it. So that sparked a conversation. Like we came up with this plan of we were going to put on something of a mini show during the polar plunge. And what I mean by that was <laughs> I was going to dress up as the undertaker. Will was going to dress up as mankind. And I was going to choke slam him off, off the platform into the lake. So, and I was very much looking forward to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're, you know, you're obviously a, a, quite a big man. So. Well, <laughs> it would have been fine. We 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 would have made it look like a million bucks. And and the worst thing that would have hurt would would have been our 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 inner core temperature because I've never done that. But I can only imagine how, how freezing cold it is. It, it was cold, but the one thing I can say is that there is so much love there, so many people there, so much, so many people giving back, and, and the crowd is just phenomenal. So I mean, you got to eat it up, man. You know, you got to you got to put the show out. So that's like, oh man, Mr. Claus has got to be a, he's got to be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. I'm surprised you haven't done it. You know, you know, truthfully, and I, I, I know this is going to sound really horrible, but, you know, in the previous years, we were running, you know, shows twice a month. And no matter no matter what happened, no matter what time of the month in February I booked, it wound up falling on that same day. And I don't realize it until I'm so far into into the, the promotions of, of the show, I can't just, oh, well, we're not going to do it this day, you know, because I still, you know, my fans, our wrestlers, things of that nature, they're expecting that date, you know, and it's usually our Bunkhouse Brawl show, which would be the, our Royal Rumble, right? So it's one of our big shows of, of the year, but. We'll, we'll get there, man. I mean, as soon as they, they lift all the restrictions and we can resume some sort of, of normalcy, then that's definitely... It's, I got the costume right right over here, man. Wig, hat, everything. The whole nine yards. Hated on being an entertainer, so I can't wait, man. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> uh, you mentioned, you know, we, uh, you know, talking a little bit about 
the the wrestling aspect of it you know you you and i are the are the same age you know we're just a few months apart from, from one another you were born in june and i was born in in april so i mean it's just less than a handful of months right sure, sure. um but as as a kid you know how did you get involved in in wrestling and, and or, you know started watching it i guess and was it just just the wwf or or did you have access to like nwa well Again, you know, we're we were born in the same generations, around the same kind of influences, and for wrestling, that was there was certain things that were on TV that you really look forward to every week. You know, there was always those TGI Fridays and you know the Cartoon Saturdays, but you know, when the WWF came to the scene, man, that, that that took off like Fortnite or the you know YouTube. It was just like lightning. You know, it, it was juice to the soul for for a ten year old or you know, even a 15 year old. And I mean, you couldn't help watch it. You couldn't help wait for the next match. You're trying to put matches together. And at that time it was just WWF. All right. And, and you had all these, you know, wild personalities coming out at you. And you know, I know one of your favorite guys, Mr. Hulk Hogan, you know, that was the American dream right there, baby. Yeah. And, you know, I, I will say that I, I like wrestling now, but for me, that was that golden era. That was when you first got to experience it. You first were like, what the hell is going on here? You know, I've never seen anything like this. And it, and it just ate you alive when you watched, you know, a match and couldn't wait for the next weeks. But, you know, during that time, like all the promotion started coming out from somewhere I'd never been. You know, you had the figures, you had the cards and, you know, you had wrestlers come out. I mean, I remember going to Kmart, Goldberg, and it was, it wasn't like today, you know, where you had to plan a show and you had to pay a hundred dollars to get a signature and you had to wait in line for eight hours. No, you waited in line for eight hours, but you were guaranteed to meet that guy. And it was just like me and you sitting here, you know, I, I met him, I met uh, George Animal Steel, you know, because he was a, a teacher in Detroit at one time. Right local um but then there was an influence from my dad as well you know he grew up in a time where he had you know the, the original peak and you know uh god i can't even think of the names by now but you know the brawler and you know just the original set of guys that were in those 50s and 60s era when when it started being introduced to the public other than okay this is not sumo wrestling this is you know different form of entertainment yeah during, during the 80s man it was just and it, and it kind of crept into every kind of social uh thing out there you know with media you, know, you had mr t you know, come, come into wrestling and all got started getting into the movies and you know it was it was brand thing and it was hard not to be Right, and then, you know, you had the whole rock and wrestling connection with MTV, and Cindy Lauper was involved, she she had Captain Lou Albano in her videos, and, you know, so it really became a pop culture ph phenomenon, I yeah. mean, there's no doubt about it, and we wouldn't see anything like that again until the Attitude Era, you know, mid to late 90s, Stone Cold, The Rock. You know the NWO over on WCW and and, and all that. So uh, very, it's very cool. I I always when when I talk to somebody who is a wrestling fan or was a, or, or was a wrestling fan, I always pick their brain as to you know what era got you hooked and who did you like and why did you like them. It's just kind of a sick fascination that that I have. You know because wrestling and you know. It's ingrained in my blood at this point. And yeah. <laughs> but uh, that influenced that, I'm sure. You right. know, is it for, you know, for a lot of people, it's so proper, but for me, it was all these different personalities. You know? And I was really into like the oddball guys too, like, you know, Jimmy the Superfly Snuka and, you know, uh, Lenny Popo and, you know, and just these guys that were coming out with these, these, attitudes and personalities and these these themes and you know mr wonderful coming out and jake the snake with the big bow on him 
right it was just wild you know and then yeah it it was a it was a good time to be a kid and grow up true true story i wish we could we could take our kids and put them in the 80s to experience what a real fun laid back you know childhood was cuz we i think we we were the last really awesome you know yeah. Generation as far as, but I'm biased too, you know. Well, obviously, how wrong about that, Jay? Because you got things like Stranger Things, and you got a lot of things nowadays that are mimicking '80s, you know, TV shows, '80s kind of attitude, '80s personality, and that it's a pop culture, but it influenced everybody going forward. Right. And just being simple for me that. Time when you could go to a Tiger game, and you could just have fun. You could go to a wrestling match or watch one on TV. And it was always there for you. You know, it, it was like family. Let's switch gears a little bit here, Will. You you made mention about your your love for our Detroit Tigers. You know, um, now generally, and this was a, was another thing that I was fascinated about. Was you know generally people our age, when we think about the history of of the Detroit Tigers, we generally will revert to 1984 with right. their last World Series win and and all the hoopla. It wasn't a matter of you know if they won a game, it was how much did they win the game by, right? Because that was just such a do, you know a dominant team. But your preference for the lack of better terms your fanfare re really revolves around the 1968 world championship team you know al kaline and horton and mclean and 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 all of those and uh you know you have a pretty unique uh collection of of memorabilia that i've You've been, you know, awesome enough to show me pictures of and things of this nature. Just, just amazing stuff that I just would never have imagined that somebody that I knew was awesome enough to, 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 you know, to possess these things. Uh, real quick, what, and you know, you and I have talked about it before, but for my viewers, um, what was it about the, about the 68 Tigers that, you really lean towards that that whole time and it's not just the team i mean of course i love those players those players to me were were just like us they were real workers you know that it wasn't like they were getting these million trillion dollar contracts that players now and um all, all the glory and the fame famous i mean for them it was this was a game that they loved to play and they loved to do it just you know, it wasn't was for it was something they truly enjoyed. And those guys, most of those guys had part time jobs and had jobs in the offseason. You know, you had Mickey Lolich had a donut, you know, and A Line and McLean and Horton and a couple of those guys, they had side businesses and worked in lumber yards and, you know, did some manual labor, you know, some, some, you know, line labor, as we call it, or riding the lightning. Right. And, um, you know, you got to respect them completely for that. You know, not, nothing against 84, the guys now, you know, incredible players, every generation. But for me, it was the time. You know, the time, 1968, there's so many things that's connected me to that. You know, parents were working down there at that time. You know, my dad would tell me stories of um, during the 68 riots of him just he had to carry a revolver in his pocket to go get a loaf of bread and a gallon of milk. You know, going through that and uh, being able to go to the shows and actually talk to the players like Willie Horton and uh, A Line and playing about you know how how their experience at that time was. And, you know, I remember talking to Willie Horton face to face, just like we are, and him telling me you know the story of him. When the riots first started getting closer to the stadium and start stuff started getting dark, you know, before breaking into stores, and you know the uh, the president was about to call the military guard in, and he literally left the game. And he had his uniform on, and went Main Street to Detroit, and he got on top of a car trying to yell at people. 
down and you know, but he was a hometown boy. You know, he came from the streets and the yards of Detroit, and he was invested in that community. But guys like him and Mickey Stanley and Kaline, obviously, Mr. Tiger himself, because the longest standing Tiger, you know, good batting champion, you no know, youngest at that time, old. But yeah, everything just revolved around that time for me. It connects me with my parents, it connects me with my love for the Tigers. Um, but more importantly, connects me with just the feeling of community. It's like a hand in hand, two sides of the coin, UAW, Tigers. There's that involvement. There's that community. There's a lot of simplicity that comes from there. You know, it wasn't about today and having these like $20,000 cards and these just craziness going on, especially with COVID, that's helped a lot of things. And um, thankfully, it's reignited the industry, the memorabilia industry, and cards and stuff like that. But during that time, I mean, something as simple as a pennant, you know, it just means a like the world because it's so simple but it it directly like holding that in your hand having that in your collection like symbolizes totally different time in history when people just enjoyed each other they enjoyed going to the park and, and the smells and the sounds and you know listening to you know ernie harwell on the little transistor radio you know the turtle and yeah. uh, you know that that would just represent a time to me that Hopefully, I, I hope one day we can get back to. It represents a time that we, our brother and sisters in the plant, you know, where people aren't so much so focused on phones and what's put on Facebook, you know, all that BS. Man. There's a lot of good things that come out of, you know, the app and, and Facebook and our group, even just daily in the plant. But you got to start with us. You do like a 90 you can balance that out that way then you're going to have a UAW. You're, going to have a UAW. you're still going to be able to stay for our pretty remarkable man let's back at you brother i mean it's 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 remarkable because i mean as as you're talking well you can really you can your sense of um of honesty, I mean, just pours right through the camera, right? Um, so here's here's the the reason why I ask. Um, a, kind of a good bad s scenario here. See, I have something for you. <laughs> I have something for you, but it it was it was a a collaborative effort okay. because I I wanted to find you something. That number one, you would enjoy. Number two, that you didn't already have, because, like I said, you have a pretty tremendous collection going on, and right. some and something that I knew would would mean something to you. That's the good part. The bad part is, is I don't have it here. Is Fallon with you? Uh, Fallon is, is is present right now. He was. Okay. She had strict directions. I didn't know what the heck was going on after. <laughs> she had. Her Mr. Klaus and uh, I respected that so <laughs> for the basher man she has a box yes yes she does I'm going to ask her to present you with the box okay don't shake it oh don't shake it okay don't no shake. don't shake it this but is, go a, ahead. This huh? is six, the plunger from 68 <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not not exactly. But go ahead and and and, and open it up for me. Okay. <laughs> what the heck is this, man? Pull it out. <laughs> oh my God! Man. So my friend Sean owns. <laughs> my friend Sean owns a uh, owns a business and he does the 3d art and I had him make this for you I talked to Fallon about it 
and I said, the, mm. I know, I know. <laughs> Man, at work, you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're, we're even. And, and I'll tell you why here in, in a second for, for the viewers. But, I mean, if you have an opportunity, plug that thing in and you can really see the, the, yeah, we're look the, at it. the, the detail in it. But, uh, uh, Krugel f Photography and 3D me Memories made that. And I picked it up yesterday, as, as a matter of fact, and he turned it on. He, he plugged it in, he turned it on, and, dude, I was blown away. And, uh, looking at it, not turned on. I mean, uh, I'm at a loss for words, man. No, I don't want. I you don't need to say anything for a couple of reasons. Number one, right next to me is this ball that that you hand painted me. That is, I mean, I absolutely love it. And it sits on, on my shelf, like, right every time I'm sitting here and I'm doing these or, or I'm recording the podcast, I always look over at, at that ball because it just means that, that much to me. But that, my friend, is a gesture for, n number one, your incredible friendship. For number two, for being just, just a spectacular person. Not just to me, but to everybody that you come in contact with. Brother, man, you're a, you're a special dude, man. I, you know, you and Fallon both, and I'm not going to have her come on camera because I don't want her to be embarrassed. But, you know, like her and I, we, Fallon works like right next to me. And that, and that poor woman, I put her through so much shit every day. <laughs> but I, I think it's 50-50 sometimes. Well, it, it depends on her mood. Can we be honest about that? <laughs> We're going to be honest. Agree with you. <laughs> in, all, in all seriousness, you guys are fantastic people, and, and, I, and I love you both. And I just wanted, I, I wanted to do something, you know, for me and on behalf of, of everybody else and just say, you know, thank you for being you. Thank you, brother. I mean, this is... Uh... This is very. This is awesome. That using your words, this is awesome. I mean, I never got anything like this. And, uh, it means a lot. It, it meant a lot for me to do that ball for you because, again, we shared that passion. But uh, you know, you, you're my unsung hero. Man. You're, you're you're a guy that I know I can come to work, no matter what. At a, at a shitty day, I had a great day. Uh, it's just one of those nights. Go to a good old line, you know, line one, room one, and uh, you know, I can just count on you with a smile or, or at least a good story and uh, something to make me feel better. Keep me going, man. I, I appreciate you every day, every night. Appreciate Klaus the heart. Um, it's, it's crept in our lives. Yeah, not going away. Let me let me plug this in so I can sure. Start. Well, I'm really glad that this was a hit. <laughs> I if you can, maybe I want to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, you, yeah, I can kind of. Yeah, there you go. There we go. So if everybody, he he did a fantastic job on that. And uh, there's actually a a a commercial that I made for his business that is going to be on this episode. So, yeah, he did a fantastic job. That's why I asked you the other night who your favorite player on this team was. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's, it's amazing, man. Now, let me ask you this. This was, was this the same guy that did the lamp for you? Yes. Okay. Because that's yeah. the way as soon as I took it out and I started really looking at it, I'm like, oh, my God, this has got to be the same guy. And, man, I I won't say that this is just as special because I know that really means a lot to you. But this really means a lot to me, man. I I knew it. I would, well, I would, I hoped that, that it would. And, in fact, <laughs> when I was talking to Fallon about it, she said, he's probably going to want to marry you. <laughs> I, 
massive love for I have massive man love for you right now. <laughs> oh well, good man. I'm I'm glad. I'm 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 glad that it it was a hit. I mean, I I wasn't really worried about it because I figured you know once I saw it, I was like, God damn, I'm gonna have to have one of these made. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have had trouble giving it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, brother, uh, as we put a, a bow on this episode, I just, you know, once again, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for, for coming on the show for number one and number two, just, you know, just for being awesome. And, you know, the world needs more Sir Wills, in, in, in my opinion. You know, we would, we would be better off if we had a bunch of you, you know, all over the world, you know, because guys like you are... Uh, you know, few and far between in this day and age. So I just really wanted wanted to bring you on, you know, as my as my debut, you know, s segment under this this new genre of the show. But you know, just to say thanks, and, um, and you know, you don't. I mean, you can argue with me until until the sun goes down, but you are an, an unsung hero, my friend. Right back to you, Mister. Right back to you, Mr. Klaus. 100%, man. I, I appreciate you every day. I owe you a huge man hug and a, and a handshake. And um, let's keep doing what we're doing, man. Absolutely. Well, that is Will Narona. And um, we certainly appreciate you t taking time out of your week to give the show a watch. If you're digging w what we're doing, visit our website, klaustheheart.net. And a new episode of the podcast will drop this Tuesday morning at midnight. So until then, t you know, all you got to do is be awesome to yourselves and to each other. And we'll see you next time right here on the Klaus for the Heart Show. Solidarity, brother. Are you looking for a personal, one-of-a-kind gift? We'd like to tell you about our friend Sean Krugel, who is offering a very unique and special service. So if you're looking for a special gift for virtually any time of the year, look into 3D art. Sean offers fully customizable 3D lamps, night lights, and more, and they're perfect for birthdays, holidays, anniversaries, and memorials, and much, much more. Just look for them over on Facebook. Look for Google Photography and 3D Memories for a truly unique present and gift.